Hello, and welcome to Healthcare Green Teams in Canada, a national picture. My name is Joanna Law, and I have prepared this presentation on behalf of the Canadian Association of Nurses for the Environment and in collaboration with the Canadian Coalition for Green Healthcare. After this presentation, we hope that you will have an increased understanding of the relationship between the healthcare sector and climate change, what green teams are and how they can influence the healthcare sector towards sustainability, and that you will have learned about green teams across Canada and the important work they are doing. Canada is a geographically enormous country with provincially run healthcare authorities. It is no surprise that many green teams and their initiatives are rather siloed and disconnected from one another. This presentation is part of a project to identify Canadian healthcare green teams and highlight their activities. The aim is to create opportunities for networking, mentorship, knowledge sharing, and collective advocacy. Many of you surely know about the relationship between climate change and the healthcare sector, so I will just do a quick review. Climate change refers to the increase in global temperatures due to human activities and the subsequent changes in weather patterns. The single largest driver of climate change is greenhouse gases. Climate change impacts a wide range of health outcomes. This slide illustrates the most significant climate change impacts, which are rising temperatures, more extreme weather, rising sea levels, and increasing carbon dioxide levels. It then illustrates these impacts effect on exposures and the subsequent health outcomes that can result from these changes in exposures. In fact, there's even some evidence that climate change is linked to the current SARS-CoV-2 pandemic by affecting the global distribution of bat populations. So who is going to respond to the health impacts of climate change? Well, healthcare workers. The healthcare sector is in an interesting position in relation to climate change. It is both integral to managing the human costs of climate change, but it also contributes to that climate change. Modern healthcare is a resource intense sector. Canada is the third highest in healthcare emissions per capita in the world. We produce 4.6% of all national greenhouse gases and over 200,000 tons of other polluting emissions. This pollution is linked to the loss of an estimated 23,000 disability adjusted life years. That is 23,000 collective years of life spent in illness, disability, or early death. We have a responsibility to do no harm, and yet in our efforts to improve health outcomes, we contribute to poor health outcomes. The largest source of healthcare emissions involve the basic operating of our facilities, power, ventilation, heating, and cooling, and more specifically, the burning of fossil fuels to meet these needs. Outside of emissions, healthcare creates a large amount of waste products through supplies, food, and pharmaceuticals. This is true even in not so obvious areas. For example, anesthetic gases and meter dose inhalers are in fact sources of extremely potent greenhouse gases. Some of these gases have the warming potential of up to 2,000 times that of carbon dioxide. Let's shift gears a little bit from the impact of climate change on health and the impact of healthcare on climate change to what some healthcare workers are doing about it and take a look at green teams. Green teams are typically grassroots organizations that advocate for environmental sustainability through awareness, education, and specific greening initiatives. They exist in many different areas such as communities, schools, businesses, industry, government, and of course, healthcare systems. Healthcare green teams can look very different in very different places. Sometimes they are hospital-wide, sometimes they are just in one department. They can be in long-term care facilities and family physician offices. They might be comprised of a few individuals or many. Green teams can have many different people on the team, such as nurses, managers, environmental staff, physicians, and directors. There are many calls to action present in the literature. The Canadian Nurses Association has released three publications concerning the role of nurses in climate change mitigation, but there are few research studies on healthcare sustainability or published information about what healthcare providers are doing to reduce their environmental footprint. Although not comprehensive, we were able to put together an interactive map highlighting the locations and types of various green teams across Canada 
their accomplishments, current initiatives, and future plans. We found a total of 20 sites with green teams, including 16 hospitals, one family practice office, one medical student network, and one health facility. The majority of green teams participating in this project are in Ontario, with one each in Quebec, BC, Alberta, and Nova Scotia. I had the pleasure of speaking with nurses, medical students, physicians, site directors, project directors, and facility managers, to name a few. This really drove home to me that we are all in this together and we all need each other in order to create change. The literature has identified a gap in personal environmental values and professional ones. Several of the people I spoke with identified having made changes in their personal lives to mitigate climate change, but realized that these personal changes can only go so far. They were able to bridge the gap between personal and professional life and are able to make tangible progress towards climate change mitigation in healthcare systems. So what exactly are Canadian green teams doing to decrease healthcare greenhouse ga gas emissions and pollution? There are seven main categories that our green teams are working in. Utilities, waste reduction, procurement and supplies, transportation, food, flora and fauna, and awareness and education. To be noted, there is significant crossover among these categories. Let's talk about utilities first. If you remember from the pie chart earlier, global healthcare utilities account for 40% of greenhouse gas emissions from the healthcare sector. Seven of our 20 green team sites have made changes to their facilities that have resulted in decreased resource energy consumption. A first step is to have an engineer do an audit of your system. One facility found during an audit that in the summer months, they were humidifying the intake air just to dehumidify it later. Several of these teams have collaborated with industry to make green changes to their lighting, heating, water, and ventilation systems. These changes include retrofitting or installing new boilers, optimization of their HVAC systems, replacement of lighting fixtures and bulbs, new motion sensing lighting and water faucets, water conservation measures, thermal regulation, and installing solar panels. Cambridge Memorial Hospital was able to save approximately 1 million kilowatt hours of electricity, 200,000 cubic meters of natural gas, and $200,000 annually. Woodstock Hospital has installed 135 kilowatts worth of solar panels, and, United, and Unity Health Toronto has saved over 15 million kilowatt hours across three facilities. Next, we look at effective waste management. And this is really where nurses can play a key role while they are uh, stewarding our resources in their care of patients. Um, we can ensure that waste is placed in proper receptacles, especially to reduce regulated medical waste. Uh, regulated medical waste requires very energy intensive treatment. Uh, in Canada, waste management solutions have included education, making sure staff have convenient access to waste sorting bins, created recycling programs, particularly for electronics and organic waste. At Ross Memorial, they had volunteers turn the blankets that wrap sterile equipment into reusable shopping bags. St. Michael's Academic Family Health Team has eliminated the use of exam table paper at the Sumac Creek location, reducing waste altogether. Mount Sinai Hospital, um, they took older but functional equipment and supplies and refurbished them and donated them to underfunded healthcare systems in the developing world. Woodstock Hospital was able to increase their waste diversion rates from 15 to 43.5 percent. Mount Sinai experienced an increase in diversion from 30 to 45 percent. London Health Sciences Centre started a Sharp Smart program for their Sharps containers and their organic waste program are together saving approximately 386 tonnes from the landfill annually. Closely related to waste reduction, uh, green teams are working on procurement and supplies. They're collaborating with companies to reduce packaging and purchase compostable and reusable products. The Green and Health Committee at Rocky View Hospital worked with Stryker to create a circular economy which allowed for the recycling of some single-use medical supplies. Each month, this reduces landfill waste by 216 kilograms. 
They also switched their cleaning wipes to an XL Prevention Wipes, which has a lower environmental impact than their previous product. It also does not require PPE to use, therefore reducing waste further. Montreal Children's Hospital and Royal Jubilee Hospital have switched to using reusable cups for patients, and Rocky View Hospital is using compostable cups. In terms of transportation, uh, some hospitals have worked to encourage active transportation. Woodstock Hospital installed 21 electric car charges. Providence Healthcare Green Team hosted a commuter challenge week, encouraging active transport of their staff. Over the course of the week, the staff were able to collectively save 366 liters of fuel and 932 kilograms of carbon. Looking forward, they hope to install safe bike storage for visitors and staff. Patient nutrition services can be both greener and healthier. Ross Memorial has an interesting vermiculture program to turn their food waste into compost, which they use in continuing care therapy gardens. Food from this garden is then used by nutrition services to provide patients with quality meals. Looking forward, they hope to start sourcing food from local producers. Providence Healthcare is looking to reduce food waste by having an inpatient dining room so that patients can pick what they want to eat and also reduce packaging from the individually wrapped items on trays. In terms of flora and fauna, uh, Mount Sinai Hospital collaborated with a local school to create a pollinator garden for patients, visitors, and staff to enjoy. We already talked about Ross Memorial's vermiculture program, and Woodstock Hospital consulted with an ecologist to ensure that indigenous plant species would be used in their new parking lot project and that salt resistant plants would be put in areas where snow will pile due to winter snow clearing. They also created a rain garden to manage storm water naturally. And finally, awareness and education, so very important. With many of these initiatives, it is vital that all staff be on board and engaged. Several green teams are working to spread the knowledge and awareness of healthcare and climate change. This is often done through events and challenges. For example, the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario has big annual Earth Day events. Rocky View Hospital's health, Green and Healthy Committee hosted a competition between two units to see which one could reduce their electricity use the most. The winning unit was able to reduce their electricity by 9%. As you can see, there are some green teams out there truly making a difference. A few characteristics come out when we look at the overall picture of Canada's green teams. First, although most of them are located in Ontario, there is representation from coast to coast. Second, is it that they all look slightly differently and are in different stages. For example, the one at Women's College Hospital has been around since 1989 and both Halliburton Highlands Health Service and Royal Jubilee Hospital Green Teams started in 2019. That's a 30 year difference. They also look different in terms of who is involved. Some are more grass, grassroots in nature, and some are more leadership based. Most green teams are in hospitals, and the two main foci of our green teams are reduction in energy consumption and waste production. Quite a number of these green teams identified a lack of engagement from hospital leaders to be a major barrier, and others were able to attribute their success to the support of hospital leadership. We can see how important it is to have our leaders on board. I do want to take a minute to mention that green teams are not the only driving force for sustainability changes in healthcare. Some health authorities have a more top-down approach with little grassroots involvement. This is seen more commonly in British Columbia. They are really doing some fantastic work over there, but are outside the scope of this project. During the course of this project, I had the privilege to communicate with many inspiring and inspired people. Aside from the facts and outcomes of a green team, they shared with me some of their observations, reflections, and encouragements. Here are a few of them. Some of the operational observations and reflections they made were that it is important to gather all the information you can and avoid making assumptions. They found huge benefits in everyone meeting together to brainstorm, and unanimously they recognized the importance of leadership support in creating even moderate change. Creating change in large organizations, particularly from a lower position in power structures, can be particularly disheartening at times. 
In these times, we feel we have no allies and we have made no progress. But it is important to realize that differences we make occur in reverberations. Small conversations create discussions and small actions eventually create waves of change. And finally, I would like to leave you with a quote from Tracy Clatworthy of the Sinai Hospital Environmental Sustainability Team. Great things can happen when we share values and communicate and cooperate with each other towards a common goal. Thank you for your attention and attending this presentation. Uh, if you are looking for any resources on healthcare sustainability or starting a green team, uh, please go to the website of uh, Canadian Association of Nurses for the Environment and the Canadian Coalition for Green Healthcare. Uh, they have some excellent resources on those websites, and uh, I hope you enjoyed.